Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Lab Notes and this is where I get a chance to talk with you and let you know when we're going to dig into some of the news and information that surrounds all the things that affects us in our own personal 3D print labs. So first up, kind of some big news, March 17th, Bamboo Lab announced a brand new flagship printer and they started putting up pictures on their website. It's the Bamboo H2D. Most of you have probably heard about this. Pre-orders are going to start on March 25th. There's been a lot of speculation, but honestly, nobody knows any more than that, other than there's been a few pictures they're posting online every day leading up to the 25th. So go to that website and check it out. Also, Prusa has put out the Core 1, and they're going to start shipping the first batch to customers this month. And in case you missed that one, it's Prusa's attempt, I think, to go head-to-head -head against the Bamboo P and X series, as well as like Creality's K. It's a Core XY, and actually it looks pretty good. The price is going to be around $1,000, give or take, depending on whether you're going to build it yourself and put it all together, or they send it to you mostly pre-built. And they're saying it's their fastest printer ever, has factory-tuned print profiles for over 200 filaments. So that'll be interesting to check out and see how that works out. Hopefully it won't take two years like some of the other printers from... Pr no, I'm... Too soon, yes, too soon. They're shipping this month, so that should be good. Uh, I'm going to have links to all of this in the description so you can check those out. We'll see, going along with printers. March must have been the month for some reason because it seems like every slicer out there just about has released a pretty major update. So if you've ever wondered about switching over to or at least trying out a different slicer for your 3D printer, well, this might actually be your time. Let's see, we have Ultimaker Cura is up to 5.9, and pretty cool. They've finally gotten into adding the scarf seams, and they have a bunch of other seam adjustments as well. They've uh, added a lot of new printers, bug fixes, and, uh, you know, obviously a lot more than that. Prusa Slicer is up to 2.9.1, and they've added better sequential printing. And if you aren't familiar with that, I have a video from a while back, and uh, I'll make sure to hopefully remember to drop that link in the description. The big thing for me on this one with Prusa Slicer is they have multi-material interlocking. This looks really interesting. It's if you've heard about multi-material like supports and things like that, where you like use PET G as the support for PLA or vice versa, they don't connect. So if you have a multi-material like that, how do you make them stick together if you need them to stick together, like PLA and TPU or something like that? Well, what they've done is they figured it out. Like TPU, PLA, they have these interlocking joints that basically grip together and that's the way it's printed. So. I'm curious to see how that's going to work, and I'll probably be looking at that soon. They also are going to have better supports for SLA resin printers and bug fixes and more like that. Now, if you haven't looked at Idea Maker, they're up to 5.2.1, and uh, the beta just dropped. I've talked about Idea Maker before with a couple of videos, but specifically, they had some have some really cool features like uh, you can add textures to your prints just by using a picture. And as far as I know, that's the only slicer that does something like that. So drop in, a, I believe it's like a JPEG or a PNG, if I remember right. Wrap that around it, it does it for you, and then that becomes your texture. So instead of fuzzy skin, like most of this is the only way we know how to do that, you can do practically anything. They've also added a support painting function. So paint on supports, and a lot, I know a lot of slicers have that, but they've added that. They have new icons for different infill types to make it easier for you to figure out which one does what and what it looks like, so that's nice. Uh, they've optimized their slicing speeds, bug fixes, and more as well. Now, the slicer that I've been using seems like the most lately for a few specific features is Orca Slicer. They're up to version 2.3.0, I did want to mention orcaslicer.com or the GitHub for Orca Slicer. Make sure 
you don't go to all those other weird websites with an S at the end of Orca Slicer or with a dash or additional dots or anything like that. I was amazed at how many websites are out there like that. Just assume that those are going to be, at least at, at the worst, some sort of spamming, if not actual outright scamming and phishing. So be careful with that. Um, they fixed some problems in, in the new Orca Slicer with the 3D Navigator. And I have noticed this, but it hadn't been huge, but the little square down on the bottom that allows you to rotate and everything, which I wish the others had, like Bamboo Slicer and all that. It's kind of reminiscent of Fusion 360 if you've used that, so you can change your view based on that little cube. They've uh, fixed some problems with that. They also have Auto Perspective, and that wasn't working exactly the way it was supposed to go. They've actually updated the ability to drop a G-code file directly in. So if you're not sure, if you're like me, you've saved G-code files for years sometimes without deleting them uh, for different printers. If you just drop it in, it's supposed to just pull it right up and you should be able to see what that is. So it's interpreting the G-code. That's a really cool feature. And they fixed some sidebar margin and spacing issues, uh, which I haven't really noticed added and updated some 3D printers and all sorts of other stuff. And then Bamboo Studio is up to 1.10.2. And they've added new filaments. They fixed a crash when you're dragging in models on a Mac. So if you're on a Mac, hopefully they fix that and you're not going to have any more problems dragging a model in and doing all of that. And one of the big things is that you can now open Maker World directly on the home page. And I tried this. You can uh, check out your collections right there. So instead of having to go to a web page, go back to Bamboo Studio, you can actually go to the home page on your Bamboo Studio, check out your collections, or just the Maker World home page. Also, um, let's see, they added a Send to Bamboo Farm Manager client. <laughs> so that feature is something they've added. Send to Bamboo Farm Manager client. With all the stuff that everybody's been talking about, with all the changes and firmware and everything like that, the fact that this is coming out before most of us have even seen any of the problem stuff, supposedly, that might be coming down the, the line, I think that's pretty cool. So they've uh, updated that and, of course, bug fixes and all of that stuff. I did want to mention, if you saw my video a uh, few weeks ago, a month or so ago, about the 3 Slicer by Matter and Form, which is a really awesome slicer. Well, they've dropped the price. Check out my video on that. And I believe that's probably one of the best scanners out there, especially if you use that turntable. I mean, you talk about hands off. Well, check out the video, you see that. But the price has dropped $14.99, $1,499. And uh, I'll leave a link for that one in the description. Cyberbrick. I, I don't know if you've heard about this. and. Don't get me wrong, I haven't really, I mean, we haven't gotten our hands on it or anything, so, but it looks like a combination of like kinetics and Lego and different things like that. But this is actually from the guys behind Maker World and Bamboo Lab. And so Cyberbrick is in Kickstarter. It's a 3D printable toy system integrating reusable, programmable electronics. So not only are you going to be 3D printing a lot of the stuff, but there's also electronics involved. I did look at the Kickstarter. You'll be able to, when you support the Kickstarter, you get different options and they're going to send you the electronics. And then all you have to do is print it out and do different things with it. So the cool thing is if you don't like what you printed and put together, print something else. So that's pretty cool. Now they did say the project very quickly, and I did notice that, that it's completely surpassed its funding goal, and they haven't even reached the end. That's going to be uh, shipping in April, they said. So they're going to have a lot of add-ons to go with this, uh, 3D printed parts to make RC toys, um, RC cars, toys, games, tools, and a whole lot more. It really looks like they're developing this whole big ecosystem around this cyber brick. So it's going to be cool to see how it works out. I could see this really being something that gets used maybe even in schools. You know, it's not just fun, but it's also education. I know my wife is involved with the, the whole Lego thing with her school, and they go and do competitions where they put things together and try to build bridges and all these different things like that. It's very critical thinking. This takes that kind of to an, another level with the electronics. So 
hopefully that's going to work out. I'll leave a link as well and uh, you can check it out. It looks like something that may be worth getting. All right, and that's about it, but I wanna leave you on a fun note, not just with the cyber bricks. As I'm looking around at different things, I ran across this article about a user that was scanning Donkey Kong characters. And then when I started checking it out, I kind of went down a rabbit hole. I found his site. It's called Keshi's Corner, and it's on the Internet Archive. And that's when I found out he has 600 uploads, which is wild. He's put all of these out there for people to get for free, and it has everything you can think of, like, well, like I said, Donkey Kong, uh, everything that you can imagine, Mario Brothers, Mega Man, Zelda, Pokemon, and a bunch of stuff I've never heard of. So as I'm looking through these, not all of them looked like you would expect from characters from TV shows and games and things like that. Then I realized these are all scans of those little gumball machine type toys and different things like that, you know, like pencil toppers or rubber figures. And, but they're there and they're, they look perfect. And you have the ability to download them and print them out and have a lot of fun. I know with Easter coming up, not many people are going to be buying real eggs, I don't think. So print out a bunch of little hollow eggs, throw some little characters in there and have fun. Go for it. Now, let me say this. I'm not a lawyer, and I don't really know the legalities of how this is going to work, but, you know, if he's putting it out there as information and you're looking at it that way, then, you know, I don't know. It's an informational site. So, like I said, I'm not a lawyer, but there you go. I just wanted to pass that along to you. So, but one more thing before I log off. I wanted to ask you a question. Um, what do you want to see on this channel? And the whole point, and I've said this, I think, before in calling it my 3D print lab is that hopefully you can feel like it is your 3D print lab and when you tell others about it you can kind of use that as well say hey I'm going to my 3D print lab and it's part of what you have at home as well so let me know what you have in, in mind you know or things that you like to see you know and I'll I'll do my best um, also don't forget the community page I'm gonna ask questions and try to be more involved with stuff like that and keep you updated as things go forward and uh, no, I haven't been that great at it, but <laughs> I'm definitely going to try to be better. Um, also check out all my old videos and things like that. A lot of information there you may have been missing. And that's it. Have fun. Keep 3D printing and continue to learn, create, and amaze.